Bowser about to praise the land. Let's go.
and I'll show Hands on, on and on, never stop Cause I can do this all day ah. Yeah, I hear the battle cry You hear the battle cry Here goes the battle cry Hey, and it goes like Rock of Ages, king of the throne You say, come on! Oh, oh, oh. And it goes like... Let me hear you say, come on! Sing louder, sing louder! i 
Jesus, we worship your holy name, my God. You alone are worthy of the praise. You alone are worthy of the honor. The glory belongs to you, Jesus. Come on, praise him, Bolt Nation. Praise him. Yes, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to share with you guys something today, which I think is an important principle, especially if you're a young person. As a young person, never ever lose your spirit of worship. As a young person, never, no matter what you're going through, no matter how good or bad life is, never lose the strongest weapon you have, which is worship. Especially with your energy, your passion. Praise God. And I want to teach you something based off David's life that we can learn regarding this principle. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul and all that is within me. I want you to say that with me. Say, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. He says, bless his holy name. Then he says it again. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. You see, the biggest reason that young people stop praising God and they become ungrateful is because they forget all that God is doing for them. They forget all that God has done for them. Listen, it wasn't your alarm clock that woke you up this morning. God gave you breath. God gave you breath. So it's important for young people to remember what God has done. And then he lists all his benefits. He says here, he says, who forgives all my sin. Already that is a huge reason to praise God. The fact that all your sin, not some of your sin, not the big stuff I will keep in the archives, but I'm going to remember that, but the small stuff will forgive. He says, all your sin, not the stuff from a year ago, the stuff from this morning, the stuff from three minutes ago. God says, all your sin is forgiven. Amen. And look what he says here. That's one of his benefits. I forgive all your sin. He heals you from all your diseases. The fact that you're not fighting in hospital for your life right now, where some people can't say the same, that's God. It's not because of your healthy habits. There are people your age in hospital right now. You see, he says, I've been the one healing all your diseases. I've been the one healing diseases you didn't even know were coming to you. God's been fighting for you. Come on. Listen to what he says. He says, I heal all your diseases. 
He says, I redeem your life from destruction. There are battles and attacks. The enemy sent your way. You didn't even know he sent your way that God has already protected you from. He says, I've been redeeming your life from destruction. Not your parents, not your good work ethic, not the school you come from, not because you're a hard worker. The reason your life is not in destruction right now is because of God. I redeem you from destruction. Destruction will not come to you. Listen to what he says, because he keeps going. He's just listing it on. He says, I redeem you from destruction. I crown you with loving kindness and tender mercies. The Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Some of you have made your parents angry, and the next day they're still angry. They see you, they're like, God says, by the next morning, I'm long over it. In fact, my mercy is upon you. I'll give you grace. What do you need, son? What do you need, daughter? I'm here for you. Every morning, his mercies are new for you. This is the God we serve. And then he says, I satisfy your mouth with good things. That you'll not be somebody that always sounds depressed. You'll not be somebody that always says, Aish, things are happening in my life. Aish, my life, my life this, my life that. God says, no, I fill your mouth with good things. You can't stop talking about the goodness of God. You can't stop telling people how good God is. That's what God does for you. And then look what he says, and I think this is very important for every one of you. He says, so that your youth will be renewed like that of an eagle. Listen, that's not a verse for old people because some young people have lost their youth. Some young people have lost their innocence, their passion, their excitement to get up in the morning. You get up and you're like, hey, it's another day. Some of you have lost the reason that you're alive and you're not even 30, you're not even 50, but you're more slow and tired than some 80 year olds. You see, you've missed that jump in your step, that excitement for life. God says, I will renew your youth like that of an eagle. I'll bring it back. Whatever the enemy tried to take from you, whether it was your innocence, whether it was your passion, your joy, whatever the enemy tried to take from you, God says, I'll renew it in your life. That you can look back at yourself and say, I'm happy to be alive again. There's a jump in your step. There's excitement. You don't look like you're sad. You look like you're smiling. Now, here's the thing. You will not bless the Lord with all your soul unless you remember these benefits. And that's why David, David's not saying this because things are going well. David is saying this while his life is a mess. And he's saying, I tell myself to praise the Lord. I don't feel like it. I tell myself, praise the Lord. Some people that are dancing in front of your dream, praise and worship, you look at them like they're crazy. Some of them are going through the worst news they've ever received. Some of them have just lost a family member. Some of them have just failed their grade. Some of them have just found out their parents are getting divorced. But they're praising God like they have no issues. Why? Because they're putting all their issues to the God who can save them. Amen? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna give God real praise. Nothing cute, forget the person next to you, who cares what they think? It's between you and God. You're gonna give God praise, remembering His benefits, remembering all He's done for you. The fact that you can walk, the fact that you can jump, and some of you don't act like it's not your personality. Because when your soccer team scores, you're like, yes, yes! And you're jumping around the house, you're screaming, all that energy, use it for God. All that strength, all that youth you have within you, use it for God. Are you guys ready? We're gonna give God a big shout of praise. You ready? Come on, one, two, three. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's where young people are at their strongest. When you praise the living God. So never ever, look at your neighbor, say never ever lose your spirit of worship. We serve a living God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. You guys can take your seats. God bless you. <laughs> I saw
so sorry. I'm so sorry for laughing. I just love worship, guys. I just love worship. Anyway, what's up, guys? Names are Connor. Oh, is... What's your name? Oh, my God. Sorry, I'm your co-host, Tata Jilady. I'm also your co-host, guys. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoy. First of all, before we get into um, the announcements and everything, first of all, can we just give, like, can we just give a shout of praise once again? Like, can we just shout Woo! again? Like, guys, Woo! thank you, Jesus! Yes, I love that. I love that thing, you know? Yo, guys, anyway, let's get to the ground rules. First of all, no sticker, no entry. So basically, if you don't have a sticker, technically you're not allowed to be sitting on your seat. So if you don't have a sticker, can you please look to the side? We've got ushers on the side who will help you with that. So please make sure everyone, you have a sticker. And then secondly... Yes, what else are the ground rules? Tell us. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ground rules. Please, please listen, guys. You see, when the service, when the sermon begins, please, please, please have a notebook and a pen out. Please don't do that thing of, uh, uh I'm going to remember, dog. I'm going to oh, remember this thing. You don't know what you did yesterday. You don't remember what happened yesterday. You, want, you see, so have a notebook out. No takers are history makers. You want, that's the thing. No takers are history makers. Legit. You understand? Someday I, I love to tell everybody, one thing I do is I make notes, I go home, I sit down, and I get before the Lord, and you actually apply it. Amen. That's how powerful it is. It's one thing to listen to a word, oh, it's so powerful. That word is so powerful. Do you apply it? No. Well, guess what? A word that's not applied is useless. Sure. That's just the truth. It sounds nice, but if you don't apply it, it means nothing. But anyway, I'm just going off track here. Any other thing? Any announcements? Yes. If you're here for the very first time, just give us a wave quickly. Give us a wave. You people. Give them a hand, yes! guys. Give guys, them a welcome. Hand. Welcome. Give them a nice welcome. 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 You guys are VIP. Welcome. You guys are VIPs. Um, Brilliant. Brilliant. After the service, there's a table. Yes. There's a table you guys can go to just to meet the... Um, some meet the yeah, leaders, some people, get some, some awesome people, get some snacks, get to know people. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the vault. Exactly. Hope you guys enjoy it. And yes. for those of you especially who haven't noticed yet, our life class training has already begun. Who's already joined in? Who's joined in? Well, yes. Awesome. Awesome. For those who don't know, we have life class during the week. But if you're unable to attend during the week because of your exams and so on, we're lucky for you. We have the, vo the life class right after the vault. Yes. So you guys can join life class right after the vault. Exactly. Yeah. And please note, the live class also to prepare you for what's coming up next. End of April, for the ladies, can I hear a woo, ladies? For the ladies, ah, we have our encounter weekend, three days where you get to encounter God. And of course, for the gentlemen, gentlemen, can I get a woo ha? Yes, Ooh, ah, for the come on, guys, woo ha, man. For the gentlemen, we have our encounter weekend happening at the beginning of March. We want to make, oh, sorry, May, the beginning <laughs> of May. We want to make sure that you guys are prepared on fire just before winter. Amen. 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 Can I get the attention of the ladies? Ladies, ladies, ladies. Oh. What happens every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 a.m.? Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not sharing anything. Come on, what's going on? Ooh, now we know who's What's going praying. on? Ah, guys, come on. What's <laughs> going on? Pastor Shane, guys, it's prayer. We will pray every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 a.m. And then now, gentlemen, ah, come on, gents. Come, gents, come, come, come. Have some oomph, yeah, one. Yeah, gents, gents. Can have a su. Danko, danko, danko. Yeah, one. Yeah. Wednesday at 5 a.m. we have Pastor Birds, guys. Pastor Bert, Pretorius. We have, we have events for every every Wednesday. And then Tato, any announcements? Anything else we're missing? There is actually. What, what, what's, there happening? Is actually. what's happening? What are we Who knows what's happening in June? In Who June? knows what's happening in June? In June. Who knows? Oh. Who knows? Who knows, huh? God friends! What? Yes! Conference youth conference on the 15th and the 16th of June, guys. Wow. And, and not even the best part, not having it here. We're having it at Super Sport Park. Super Sport Park. Super Sport Park, my G. Is that where they play cricket? Are we going to watch a match or something? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 dude. We'll pack out that stadium, bro. We'll get people saved. I promise you that day. People oh. will encounter the love of God. Oh. People are going to encounter the presence of God. People's lives 000. are going to be changed. Isn't it 30,000? Thirty thousand. Yeah, I'm 30,000. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I think. Is there anything you have to say? Oh, yes, for the next segment. Who's the cheerful giver? Oh, there's no cheerful givers. Oh, my goodness. There's but yes, if you're a cheerful giver and you're ready to unlock the blessing of God onto your life, please welcome our tithes and offering segment. Zuke. Praise Jesus. Praise God. It's amazing to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon. Are we excited to be in the house of the Lord? There's no excitement here, man. Come on, are we excited to be in the house of the Lord? Sure. 
I mean, I had to drag that out of you guys. But really, as we are about to get into the Word of God, one thing that they didn't mention there is that the, the conference ticket is only about 50 rand. Shoo! Somebody say 50. 50. It's only 50 rand. If you want transport with it as well, it's going to be 100 rand. But nonetheless, we're going to get into the Word of God today. And I'm really going to take you guys to the book of Matthew chapter 14, verse 19 to verse 20. Now, this is a time where we're looking, God, the Bible says that. It says, then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to the heaven, he blessed and broke it and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave the multitudes. The one thing that about this scripture, actually, that really got me to a place where I'm like, well, it's an amazing scripture. Why? Because God says that, the Bible says that he took and he broke it and he blessed it. Now, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs as well, chapter 10, verse 19, it says that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow to it. The reason why I speak about this scripture as well, we have to understand that when we speak about the blessing of God, it's completely different from a man's blessing. What do I mean? When it comes to the, the blessing of the Lord, you're speaking about multiplication. Look at your neighbor and say, multiplication. It's multiplication. God gets to a place where he multiplies your finances. He gets to a place where he grows your finances into a mighty way. Because we saw that he only had what? Five loaves and two fish. But it actually got to a place where it started feeding about multitudes of people. And that's the thing about it is that when you allow God, when it comes to your finances, amen? When God, you allow God to get into your finances, when you give unto him, he actually multiplies what you actually give unto him. But that's the thing, if you hoard, if you get to a place where you keep everything in your pocket, then there is no room for multiplication. And I have a testimony when it comes to this. It's because really God was actually speaking to me not so good long ago. It was recently uh, in this uh, Easter, Easter's conference we had on a Friday. You know, what God did, did is that he, you know, the, the team of mine, which is in Sosanguve, you know, the day before, we were planning to make sure that each and every person was coming there. And there were about 86 people who were coming to the conference. And really, they had a schedule. And I didn't know that that schedule was actually like a proposal, but ultimately I thought it was on the official schedule. You guys know that schedule, that bus schedule, right? Many of you guys know it, where it tells you when the bus is coming. And really when I got it, and I'm like, okay, wow, the guys are actually sorted for the transport. The crazy thing is that the following day comes, this is Easter's conference on the Friday at 8 a.m. I said it was 6 a.m. because we got there earlier on to set up. And what happens is that my guy calls me and he says, hey, man, we, we're still just looking for the driver's number. I'm like, you don't need the driver's number. Just be at the stop, man. Crazy, right? And the funny thing is that now he tells me, no, the bus hasn't arrived. Many people are already making their way to the conference. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's happening? Let me find out. Let me get to uh, Pastor Zintle. And I get to him, and I'm like, hey, Big Z, just tell me what's happening with the bus. He's like, no, you are the one supposed to be organizing it. Now I call him. I'm like, hey, what's happening? He's like, hey, dude, that bus, you, <laughs> that was not a bus. That was just a proposed schedule. Sure. At that point in time, everything just went dark. I'm like, oh my gosh, 86 people are waiting, waiting for me to make sure that the bus is getting to them. But at that point in time, God actually got to a place of testing me. And he's like, okay, let's see what you're going to do. Are you going to be able to get to a place where you get all of those people here? What happened is that right at that moment, I asked my friends, I'm like, hey, what's happening? How much is the bus? The bus, they called, they told me that what, how much the bus is. It's for you to find out. <laughs> and we at that point in time, I was like, yeah, that figure is heavy. But really, God got to a place where he convicted me. And he says, I want you to trust me in this now, Zuko. And at that point in time, I was able to, and I paid for the entire bus, and the people were there in the conference. But the crazy thing is that at that point in time, I was so depressed. I even went on my feet, on my knees. I'm like, God, I'm not sure if this is you. But the one thing that I really was grateful for is that of the people that were in the bus, many gave their life to the Lord. And I realized something as well that, you know, I don't have much time. That's why I'm trying to cut you guys. But the one thing that I realized is that, you know, when it comes to God, God is just waiting for you to get to a place where you give. And then he will multiply what you have given. Because from there, my business started springing up. I'm like, whoa, what's happening? Where is this coming from? Only because God will trust you. Because you can never be trusted until you test it. Now, God will get to a place where he tests you first. When it comes to your finances, that are you going to give to him? If you won't be able to give to him, then he won't be able to multiply what's in your pocket. Are we learning something? Why don't you just put your hands, your, your ties on your hands and your offering on your hand as we're about to give unto the Lord. I trust that each and every person here has been convicted by the Holy Spirit that you get to a place where you give unto the Lord because that's what God does. He multiplies what you've given. Amen? 
Come on, let's pray. Father God, we come before you, Lord, right this afternoon, Lord. We're not coming to you, Lord, because we have it all figured out. We come to you, Lord, because we trust you, Lord. Let this offering to you, Lord, let it be a worship towards you, Father, oh God. We come to you, Lord, and we lay all of our offerings, our tithes at your feet, Holy Spirit of God. And we thank you, Father God, that you are the great multiplier, Holy Spirit of God. And I thank you, Father God, that you multiply each and every seed that is sown today, Lord, 30, 60, and 100 fold back upon each and every person's life right here, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that wherever they get from, Holy Spirit of God, I pray, Father God, that you are the source of all of our resources. We thank you, Lord, that you are God. You said in your word that when we give unto you, Lord, you will open up the windows of heaven and you will pour out such a blessing that we will not have enough room to contain the blessing that we have for our lives. And we thank you, Father God, that we can come to you, Lord, in worship. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to give? Log on to the my3c.tv website for your cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Choose your donation option, enter your amount, and press pay now. Choose from one of our easy and convenient payment methods, and you're good to go. You can give via credit or check card, instant EFT, or QR code apps. My3c.tv cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Fix your eyes on the screen for the QR code. is excited to announce the release of our much-anticipated album, We Bow Down, featuring hit songs like I Am Free, The Lord's Prayer, and Siakotama. Down includes brand new music featuring award-winning artists Kayam Tetwa, Ndoko Zombambo, and Talk to Do Me. We Bow Down, available now on all digital platforms. Greetings, family. We're once again back in a sunny KZN, and we are here at House Jileka in the Hammersdale region. We're here to complete the project, and this week we are aiming to put up all the windows and all the doors. We're starting to plaster on the inside. The plumbing is uh, going underway, as well as all the electrical work. So as you can see behind me, it is a bit of a construction site. Uh, we've already got the premix ready uh, for uh, some of the concrete work that we're going to be doing and we are really excited as you can see behind me and on top the roof is on the tiles are on we're doing a professional job here uh, for the house uh, of uh, the, the the jileka household and let's go check out exactly how this week progresses my name is nitlantla shembe i'm an electrical instructor from costa kids at Antibet college my relation with the uh, family is that um, I was training the late Wunagele Jilega who passed away. When that happened and I felt like I have to lay a hand and taking up my students to go to my sister in, um, in building and assisting in plumbing and electrical. I am a blessed Kuala foundation. They need a lot of support from other um, organizations, particularly government departments need a lot to do 
in assisting NGOs like this one because they can be of assistance in helping the development of people, particularly those who are indigent and those who are actually can't uh, help themselves. That's a wrap here from our side. So thank you once again to our founders, Pastor Bert and Pastor Shanae, for the vision for this House Jileka project. We are fast approaching handover where we are going to be giving these specific keys that I have in my hand to the Jileka family. But until then, God bless you. Come on, let's give God a great and a praise. It's so awesome. There's now a family that has a house that was taken by water. You guys know there was like great floods in the KZN area. And then, of course, many people lost their family members. And, and that was really such a tragic thing. But God is good. And we're so glad as the church that we can actually rebuild our house and actually build an even better looking house. Amen. That's what God does. The enemy can come and try and destroy. But when God comes, he restores and he makes it even look better. Just tell your neighbor, he makes it look so much better. Amen. Today, I'm not going to make you guys talk a lot to each other. Uh, we, we're not going to do that, right? I tend to do that a lot, right? All right. So it's awesome. I'm really glad to be sharing the word of God with you. And I'm so excited for the, for the, for the vault conference that's taking place June 16th. That's going to be awesome at a stadium. Man, that's going to be like fantastic. So I'm, I'm looking forward to what it will be like because... There's nothing like it. It's going to be the largest youth conference in the country in a very, very, very long time. So I'm really looking forward, if not for the first time, having 30,000 young people gather together. Amen? So we're really excited for what God is doing. It's such a privilege to be able to share the word of God with you today. And, uh, and I know you guys were checking out. Check out the, 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 you guys check out the, the graphic? It was supposed to be Pastor Pearson, right? And then there I am. I rocked up, right? Okay, so Pastor Pearson wasn't feeling all that 100%, and he just thought, you know what, I can get somebody else also to just come in for him, and I know we're just really praying for, for God to just heal him, and uh, so that he doesn't cough, he's just been coughing a little bit, it's irritating, you know, you ever had that kind of cough, you're just coughing and it's really irritated, that, but we're really praying for God's healing and over his body, and we're excited, and really shout out to my pastors, and the reason why I say shout out is because I acknowledge I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God having used leaders like Pastor Bird and Pastor Shane in my life. So really, as, as, as my spiritual leaders and as my pastors, really want to acknowledge them. We really love you. And let's give our pastors a great hand. Pastor Bird and Pastor Shane, so awesome. Really, really great leaders. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. And I'm married. Can you guys believe it? I'm married. Pow, 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 pow. Right? So I'm married to a pretty girl named Busi. And, uh, and we also have a wonderful um, bunch of fans called our children. And uh, there's like five of them, like five of them. It's like a basketball team. You know what I'm saying? We have an entire basketball team. Point guard, small forward, everything, right? So, so it's so awesome. And of course, today we're speaking on relationships. Whoa! On relationships? This is going to be crazy. So when I was asked that, listen, you need to talk on relationships, please make sure everybody brings in their own seatbelt because they're going to go on a ride. So I was like, okay, cool. So guys, if you didn't come with a seatbelt, ask the person next to you if they can borrow you some seatbelts because you're going to need it because you're going to need some truth jumping on this. And of course, we're speaking on relationships, something that many people don't, don't think we speak about at church. So we're going to dive in on that. So I'm really excited and looking forward to a great time in the presence of the Lord. But we're going to unpack a little bit, yeah? Can we unpack this whole thing, this awkward re relationship talk, this dating talk, this situationship talk? Can we do that? Can we do that? Is that okay? All right, cool. So if I say something and you kind of feel like you want more, just go past that, dive in. Are you ready? Right. So who wants me to go in? Okay, cool. What you want me to do? All right, cool. I'm going to dive in. So it's really awesome to be speaking on this. And, uh, and I know when we're, at the time we're done, more than anything else, we'll be brought to a place where we can see the greater plan of God. Because this stuff with relationships and God, it's like there's this hollow, this little gap. And no one has ever really explained it. So we're going to break it down to all your millennials and everybody else to say, what does God say about relationships? Are you guys ready? 
And so we have been doing also a series on absolute commitment. You see, for God to be able to, to, to do what he needs to do, he's looking for a generation of people who are going to say, God, I'm committed to purity. I'm committed to a life that pleases you. See, God is looking for people who give him the absolute commitment. God is not looking for lip service. For you to say, oh, I'm a Christian and I'll go to the vault. And then yet your life says something else. Your life has to reflect who God is because you call yourself a Christian. In other words, when someone says, what religion are you? You say, I'm a Christian. What you're really saying is, you're not just of a, a religion, but you're, when you say you're a Christian, what you mean is that, watch me as I have been watching Christ. So if they watch you and they don't, they don't see Christ, then there's something with you that is actually really wrong with you. There's just something really wrong. And so, when it comes to relationship, especially for our generation, it matters how we live our lives. It matters how you live your life. How you look at relationships. Woo, you guys are so quiet. If it was the university students, they'd be like, no, pastor, you are still warm. Turn up the heat. Okay, cool. It's not enough just for us to be hearers of the word, but we need to be doers of the word. Many of us, we call ourselves Christians. We speak Christianese. We look Christian but live like the devil. How we live our lives matters. We are going to be speaking about relationships today, and it's very important to understand that you have to do relationships right. Did you know you can actually do relationships right? That actually you can have a crush on somebody and actually do it right? They're like, I like this guy. He's talking about my crush. He's right next door to me. Hey, crush. Well, let's see what's going to happen to that crush when the devil crushes him, right? Why is it important to understand God's idea of doing relationships? Because God in himself is a God of relationships. If you want to know how to approach relationships, many of the times we look at other people and what they do, what our friends say, and we don't realize that the, pers the best person to model how to approach relationships is God. At no point does God say, do this and I will love you. At no point does, that do you ever get to a place when it comes to God that you have to do something to be able in order to get something. With God, it doesn't work like that. It's amazing in a the relationship. There's this kind of subtle little pressure that you kind of get that you got to be, so where are you? What have, and someone will ask you this question. What are you guys doing? Like, what have you guys done? You guys look so holy at this moment. You've got holy faces, but inside, mm. Some people are hiding like, yeah, yeah, yeah you got me there, right? When God designed us, he had an idea in mind of who you are, and he had an idea in his mind as, what, as to what is best for you. It's amazing that when you like somebody, you look at them and you're thinking, mm -hmm -hmm. yeah, I think it can work. Yeah, you're kind of tallish enough, you know. I like them tall, and, you know. Some guy, be like, some guy will be like, no, I like them, you know, kind of like looking like, you know, you got to look like, and I'm sitting there, I don't want to mention names because next thing you start thinking, that's what I think about. I'm not going to mention the artists and the people that you guys think are celebrities and a big deal. And then we look at that and we now start to measure according to the standard of what the world portrays. Because why? You're not looking at God. You're not learning from God. And I'm going to get there now. See, God is a father, and when he thinks about relationships and how you're going to get the feels sometimes, he's not in the business of trying to prevent you from feeling what you're feeling. That's not what God is thinking. He's thinking what you're feeling, where will it take you? Will your feelings make you run to him or be dictated and run towards 
what your feelings say. I want you guys to write this down. I'm going to give you guys the scriptures in a little bit. See, this is what happens when you're feeling something in your heart. You know what happens? The flesh, it always wants to do what it feels, which means what you think, what you feel, and what you want. Someone say, think, feel, want is the devil. I want you to say that again. Say, what I just think, feel, and want could just be the devil. It's important that you understand. Just because you feel it, or someone say, it feels right. See, feeling is wrong. You need to know what the Bible says. If you and I just do what we feel, we're going to get into trouble. Who's ever gotten into trouble for doing what you felt like doing? What you thought of doing? What you wanted to do? Exactly. Look where it got you. Are you with me? So we need to learn the word of God. Hallelujah. We need to learn the word of God. So quickly turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. And this is the church of Ephesus. And the apostle Paul is teaching up to the church of Ephesus about how to conduct themselves. He's not saying don't have that feeling. He's saying when you have that feeling, this is what the word of God should be saying to you. Because that should be directing you regardless of what you think, what you feel, and what you want. So that you can be obedient to God's plan and God's will for your life. Amen? Jordan, I need you to look at me, please. So, Ephesians 5 verse 1 to 9, it says, it says, it says, imitate God. Therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children, live a life filled with love. Hello. Following the example of Christ. Because you said you're a Christian, right? Follow the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasant aroma to God. I'm just going to pause there. The way you do relationships, what you do with boys, what you're doing with girls, is it a sweet smelling aroma to God? Or is this funny little things that y'all just doing in the corners? What is God smelling about your life? When you think about relationships, what is God smelling upon your life? Verse 3 says, let there be no sexual immorality or impurity or greed among you. He says, let there be. It's in the Bible, guys. You can't cancel me. Cancel the Bible. He says, let there be no sexual morality. And then, does it just end there? For those who says, yeah, okay, well, okay, cool, I'll stop. But you're thinking about it. It says impurity. Which means impure thoughts. Some people, when they look at girls... I got on only X-ray. Awesome. Woo! Impurity. Ingondo yako ibolile. You rotten to the core. You need to ask God. Say, God, my mind ain't right. It says, it says, and greed among you. You thinking about greed has something to do with somebody who doesn't want to give you anything. You know what greed means? It means I will say anything to get something from you. In other words, someone will say to you, this is the spiritual one around here. You know, I kind of feel like I want to be like special friends and, you know, and, and like, like, yeah, man. Like, you know, I've been talking to my leader and, uh, that whole time, that sister is lying. That girl is lying. That guy is lying. Why? 
he says or she says what she needs to say because why? Greed makes you, it, it appears as if someone has got something good for you, but actually no, they want to take something good from you. Let me go on. It says, such sins of impurity, immorality, and greed have no place among God's people. In other words, there's no room. In other words, it means you can't come here and say, Siakotama, which means to bow down, but yet you're worshiping the movies that you're watching. You can't say, Siakotama, we bow down before God, and yet you're listening to the music that you're still listening to. That is, has sexual content, saying the things that it's saying, and then you go and say, no, it's just music. I like the beat. Somebody is lying. What are you listening to, though? What is the music we're listening to? I'm going to paint up, ain't it? Like, what the freak, man? Somebody stop me. Number four, verse four, it says, obscene stories. Which means those funny little stories that somebody got to tell. Girls, let me tell you something what the boys talk about when y'all aren't there. What the boys say about you guys. Let me tell you what the boys say. Now, hold on. Let me tell you. Because that's what they talk about. When they're standing in a circle and the girls are there and y'all have been up to something the weekend. When he comes and says, boys, <laughs> me, 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 that girl, me, I, grr, bra. I, me, I, I. Bro, I buried her, bro. I buried her, bro. I laid her down. I buried her, bro. I got that girl. Mm, I got that. Me, that girl. Man, I'm done with her, bro. Me. Ah, man, that girl, bro. Man, that girl is nothing, bro. She's, she's, she's street trash. I've been there. I've been in there. And you're sitting there, oh, wow, he likes me. You dumb girl. He's into me, no? Exactly. He's into... Uh-huh. Now look at you. You don't gave yourself to this dude. You're only 15. I think he loves me. I think we might just end up together. You're stupid. What are you going to do at 15? What is he going to do? His broke self at 15 ain't going to do nothing for you. It says obscene talk, verse 4. Foolish talk. It says and coarse jokes. They tell jokes. I look at that girl with the badunk dunk. They go with the, with the plickety plow plow. And they talk like that. Once I'm like, what the freak? You know why? Because you have become an object. Because girl, you don't realize. That's why in the Bible, God didn't bring Eve until Adam was ready. Did you know that? God make, made Adam wait. And he waited for a long time. This generation doesn't want to wait. When you feel it, you got to have it. And you know what he did? When he created Adam, he looked at him and said, no, no, no. Let me make sure he learns even how to even build stuff and do things so that he already has an identity. Many of this generation, your identity is in the relationship that you're in. The person that you're with. And what your friends think about you when you are with that person. Some of you right now, you already have an agenda about somebody. You didn't even come to the vault ready for the vault. But what's in your heart is so revolting to God. I want to tell you something. Because God sees your agenda. God sees what's in your heart. He knows you're not really all about him. 
You're all about what you think, what you feel, and what you want. Not really about God. Many of the relationships that are happening in this generation that you guys look up to, that you look on, 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 on X or you check out on Instagram or on TikTok that looks like it's ideal, it's all created by, by the devil himself and you don't even know it. They're a cute couple. Listen, God is not looking for cute couples. Because cute don't do nothing for the world. So this thing of genera this generation... Well, you guys who secretly, because we know what you'll get up to Fridays. Fridays and Saturdays, going to the freaking ice rink, going to Kokaika and all these places. Meeting up, so I'm hanging with my friends. And you know very well when they drop you off, who you're going to be with. Let's continue. Verse 5, he says, Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will enter nor inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshipping the things of this world. What are the things of this world? The things that, what? The things that we feel, the things that we feel, and the things that we want. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sins. I'm not so bad. We just kiss, that's all. We're just kissing. No, he just gave me a hickey. Like, oh, oh, oh. It says, verse 6, verse 6, it says, Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse their sin for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in these things that people do. It's talking to you and me. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have the light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces what is good, right, and true. The devil will do everything in his mind to bring somebody. Somebody, you know what the devil will do? He will also bring you the most, most cutest guy, Shem. The most yummy looking boy. And he's licking his lips. He's like, ooh, Jesus. And when he walks in, he walks towards you. You're like, oh, my friend, hold me. Hold me, somebody. And meanwhile, what you're thinking, what you're wanting, and what, what you're feeling starts to take over and you don't even remember the word of God. See, there's a big warning that God is giving us when it comes to how we do relationships, especially when it comes to purity. See, God is not worried about who you like, who you fancy. It's not, it's not what he's worried about. It's what you do with those thoughts, where those thoughts go. If those thoughts are not brought before the Lord, because remember, he brings, you bring it to the fire, that when he burns it, what is the smell of that which has been brought before God? Will it be a sweet fragrance? Remember, for us to get a fragrance, we have to burn. Can your life, when it comes before God, we put it the fire of God, the relationship, the feelings that you have, the thoughts that you have, when you have to put it before God, does it become a sweet fragrance and aroma before God? Or is it a rotten, crude, lustful, evil smell? What is it? See, who's ever seen a, when we have an infestation of rats, we buy red tags, right? Did you notice that on the box, that even though its purpose is for rats, they still warn us about it. The warning on the box is not for the rats. The warning on the box is for you and me. So as Christians, the warning in the Bible about what can happen to you when you participate or indulge 
in there which is not right for you is written in the Bible in fine print. This is a warning for you and me, which means if you indulge and you try and be like the world and you try out the things they're doing in the world, the Bible says it is destructive to you because Satan will do everything in his strength to make sure that he switches off all these lights that are in the room in here you switch them off and bring a boy and switch that thing or bring a girl and switch off or switch off and bring some 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 website with illicit pictures and switch off get somebody send you pictures on your dms and switch it he can't wait to switch off the light because he knows once he dims that light you are a a vessel for somebody to receive salvation forever you must remember you're a connection for somebody to receive jesus for all eternity See, so we'll do everything in his strength to make it seem like everything that we even tell you as your leaders, as your cell leaders, as your pastors. That it just seems like, you know, they're getting in the way of what I'm feeling. Can I just be a normal teenager? Let me tell you what a normal teenager looks like. It's very quiet here today. Let's go to, quickly jump to the book of I want to quickly do this. Book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. I need to end with this scripture. I know, eh? It's coming very quick. We're going to have part two. You guys want to get part two? Okay, cool. Let's finish part one then, yeah? Can we do that? Romans 12 verse 2. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you. It's amazing. I plead with you. It's not I'm advising you says, I plead with you. says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God, not to Johnny. I don't know, Pastor, no, Pastor. You know, I don't know. Like he likes me. Dylan is like into me. Like he's into me, Pastor. Like he, he like really likes me. No. And you're letting Dylan touch you. inappropriately now you're feeling things you shouldn't be feeling because you've given your body guess what God says about your body dudes especially the guys because the guys think it's the girls that need to be pure let me show you what it says it says and so brothers and sisters I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you let them be a living and holy sacrifice and kind, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. You guys thought worship was a song. Your lifestyle is worship. Is your lifestyle worship to God? When you are hanging with that girl that you like and the things that you're doing, it's the type of worship that you think it is on the stage singing God we are in the upper room your presence is in this place when you and I as vessels of God when we are living our lives and we're letting somebody touch you will start to wash our bodies remember our instruments of worship so whatever you are doing with that boy is it worship to God or is it worship to Satan you choose depending on how you conduct yourself your way you conduct yourself the way you treat your body is it worship to God because when you do something that you know is not right you begin to worship Satan himself instead of getting the audience of heaven with your life you now get the audience of all the demons and all the legions of spirits that say ah finally we've been waiting this person has been singing Trissi Life for the longest time. Now she's for us. He now, he is one of us. Because the way you live your life is worship. The question is, who are you worshiping? You know, we think just because we're young. No, I'm still young. I'm kind of sort of learning things. No, there's no time to learn. You better walk right with God right now. 
Because we think we're young and it's okay, I can just do what I want, dabble in whatever I want, and you know, it doesn't matter. It matters to God. You may be 14 years old. The way you lead your life, it matters to God. Now, many of us may not know how to say, because this is what needs to happen. I can get the worship team here. You guys can hop on. It's fine. One of the things I want us to make, to get you guys to realize, is that you have the best possible connections in your life because you're still young here's a good thing about it some of you you haven't done weird things so i'm not going to introduce things to you don't worry about it don't worry about the pressure of all those people already are hooked up on the things that they hooked up in because the devil has already got them and maybe you have not done anything yet good for you you are in the best possible position because god is looking for holy vessels don't be fooled by the trends of this world and what the world is showing you and they make you think that's what it looks like or that's what it looks like. What's it, what is socially acceptable? What looks cool? God is not moved by that. You have to understand the word of God and what it says. I remember watching in the 90s. This is in the 90s. Y'all were not born in the 90s. No one here born in the 90s. I think maybe one or two. Maybe Austin and Zuko or something. I don't know. They were born in 1990 or something. These guys are old, man. They're old. They were old 10 years ago. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I remember watching a sitcom, which you guys maybe may see sometimes on the internet because they like to play these because they were very popular. There's a girl comes and sit, sits with her mom. And the boy also goes and sits with his dad. Because why? They want to talk to their dad and to them. The boy wants to talk to his dad because he's in a relationship with a girl. He likes a girl. Then the girl says to her mom, Daddy? No, sorry. The girl says to her mom. Not, mommy can be daddy. Okay. The girl says to mommy, you know, I was talking with, with Davis. And Davis says, you know, he feels like we need to take our relationship to the next level. Then the mom, then the music starts to play. Ooh, and then everybody sit, and then the girl sits down with the mommy. Look at the wisdom. Then mommy stays into the distance, seemingly having this great wisdom, epiphany that she has. She looks at her daughter and then she says, Baby, follow your heart. Yeah. Then the move, then the sitcom ends, then we all clap. Wow, great wisdom. You know what the Bible says about the heart? The Bible says the heart is wicked. So some of you need to learn and understand whatever is going on in your heart right now about the relationship you're in and the things that you're doing, God says it's wicked. It's not cute. It's not God ordained. It's wicked. It's evil. Some of you can't stomach that. How can it be? It feels so good. I know. The body loves to feel good when it rebels against God. A lot of the things that feel good to the body, many times. That's why we don't like exercise. You ever notice that exercise is so, such a schlep? Because it's actually good for the body. But just chilling. You just want to chill. Watch a movie. Candy bar. Bar one. Lays. Oh, Doritos, flaming hot. Sour worms, yeah. Jelly babies. You just want to eat there. It's amazing. The body likes everything that is destructive against it. But everything that is good for you, it's always anti everything that is good. Understand me, young people of this generation. The devil using the music industry using the Hollywood television industry, entertainment industry. He's doing everything in his strength to make sure that he preaches his own sermon. Satan is preaching his own sermon through the music that you're listening to. So tell yourself, say, right now, listening to this artist stops today. 
Do you know what I'm talking about? Listening to these evil artists who have sacrificed their lives. They've, they've, they've built altars in their own homes, in their lives. They're worshipping the devil in plain sight. And that's the music we listen to. Because it's trendy. It makes you fit in with the friends that you have. The Bible says, what does it profit a man or a woman that they gain the favor of the world yet lose their lives? Many of you, if you're not careful, you will lose your life. You will lose your life and you thought you were young. We have buried many young people at a very young age of 14, 15, 16, 17. One of them was doing the In Pursuit program in, in IP. He was still saved, born again, still going to church. One day decided he's going to go to a party with his friends. Listen to me, guys. It's what happens when you're born again, especially when God knows you become the radiant light to some of the people who are not saved around you. They may, not be, they, may not be, they may not be close friends to you. He got into a car, went to a party with a bunch of friends. They got into a car accident. They all lived. He died. All those unsafe friends, they were like, yo, accident, yo. He never made it. They came out with little scratches. He lost his life. The only born again one was the right one in righteousness with God, but was, was at the wrong place with the wrong people. Be careful who you let be around you. Because the devil, he may not be able to destroy your soul, but he'll always do everything to try and switch off that radiant light that you are of salvation. Don't compromise on your walk with God. Don't compromise on your walk with God. Don't compromise on your walk with God. I've seen friends of mine that are no longer here. Of my generation. They passed away in the 90s, in the early 2000s. They passed away, all of them gone. One of them was my childhood friend. Childhood friend. Went into a car with another guy. Both our parents were friends. Coming from a Christian home, his mom, a praying mother, siblings, all of them loving Jesus. Got into a car, started backsliding with a friend. I can tell you now, I'm not even sure where he is today. I can't even tell you. I looked at him. There, his young body, young body, looked at him. And I thought, but he's so young. He's so young. With tears in my eyes, I didn't understand. I was confused. He's so young. Then God says, that's the difference that you have. You chose a different path. You're always protected when you are walking with those around you. I want to quickly just throw something. I want you guys to quickly write this down. Quickly write this down. I want to take, give something to you guys that you can take with you. It's important. Accountability. How you live your life. You've got a human leader. Yes, you've got God. But remember, you've got a leader that God has put in your life. You should be open with that leader. And if you're not sure, if your leader is also struggling with the same thing, it's fine. Then you go to their leader. If somehow a girl is talking to you and she's hitting your DMs and somehow you realize that your leader also, he also has DMs, he can't help you, that guy. You need to go to his leader. Because he's also... He's still entertaining DMs. Don't, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that God will help him. It's just for the meanwhile. Because you guys are on the same boat. You need to be able to be somebody who's like Peter. Who's going to say, Lord, I want to come where you are. Step out of the boat. Are you with me? Someone say accountability. Let me say this. One who accounts for their relationship is safer to be with or around than a seemingly super spiritual, self-confident, island style type of Christian guy or Christian girl. So the word I want to break down for you is the word abbreviation of the word accounts. Someone say accounts. 
Somebody who is a good disciple accounts for how they live their lives. So the word accounts, I'm going to break it down. A, let's go. Let's go. You guys ready to write? A stands for abstinence. Abstaining from everything that is unholy towards God. Touching. Fondling. Kissing. Abstinence. Abstaining from any kind of foreplay or any kind of romantic touching of each other because you're, you're playing with fire because it's always progressive. Someone say it's progressive. progressive. See, only five people. The rest don't want to say it. Eh, no, pastor. It will end there. No, it doesn't. The devil doesn't want it to end there. Number one is abstinence. Number two is the word C, the letter C. It's the word closeness with God. Closeness with God. Which means in everything you do, so Lord, I'm feeling something. But God, I'm closer to you more than ever. Everything that I'm feeling that is not of you, burn it with the fire. You'll see you'll burn off all the things that are not right in your life. He burns it. Why? Because you are in close proximity of the fire of God. Number three is the letter C. Conviction about one's purity. You know why you're keeping yourself pure. Many Christians don't know why they're pure. No, I'm not going to do anything until I'm married. That's not good enough. It's not good enough to say I'm not going to do anything until I'm married. Because it's not about what you're doing. It's also what you're thinking. Purity in the mind. Conviction about one's purity. That is number, letter number three, which is C. Letter O is open to discuss every detail of every relationship. Whether be it with a guy or be it with a girl, there's an openness. Because everything you try and, you see, sin thrives in secrecy. Open, always open to discuss every detail of all your relationships. You, which is the next letter, united in spirit and in prayer. In other words, even when you like somebody, you can check. You can see that they love God so much they will never touch you or do anything inappropriate then you are united in spirit even though the person likes you it becomes pure it becomes worship before God it's nothing wrong with liking somebody that's not the problem It's what you do when you start liking somebody do you bring it before God or do you lay it at your own altar of your own desires are you with me let her end no room for sexual immorality of any sort because there's also girls hanging together hanging together and you're touching and you're doing funny things and it's the spirit of lesbianism and homosexuality that is becoming prevalent amongst girls and a soul tie gets created amongst girls they look inseparable you're wondering why they're inseparable no there's a bond that the devil is putting there. There's a spirit. There's an evil demon that's in operation. It goes today. T, true friendship is bigger than the ups and downs of this chemical reaction type of relationship. True friendships, which means that when you say somebody is a special friend, it goes to the first one and the second one. Abstinence and closeness with God. If you're of age, you're like 18 or 19 years old or 20 years old and you're no longer even a 19 year old and you're already 20 and you're thinking, okay, this person, I actually quite like them. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with liking them. But let's refer to that. A true friendship will never be at the cost of your purity. The last letter, S, is the word sanctify your relationship. You know what the word sanctified means? It means it is set apart. It doesn't look like all the other relationships. People even ask you, why don't you guys hold hands? Why? But I hold hands with, and there's this pressure that you must hold hands. No, we cannot do this. And No, it says sanctify your relationship. In other words, set apart before God. People are struggling today here. Yeah? Let's all stand up together. The rot of hell ends today. 
Satan will not have room in your life as of today. The lie and the deception of Satan is exposed today. That's why some of you are so quiet, you can't even move. Because why? Satan had you so paralyzed with impurity. That's why some of you are going to leave this place. You're going to be more free like you've never been free in your life. Because why? The grip of Satan has been loosened by the truth of the word of God today. And I want every eye closed and every head bowed today. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Every eye closed, every head bowed today. I want us to do an application. We're going to do it just in a little bit. If you're in this place here today, I'm going to do it. Every eye closed, every head bowed. I don't want anybody looking around. I don't want anyone being aware of their surroundings. I want you to become aware of your heart. Now it's time for you to look into your heart. For those who are even online today, please don't be doing something else. I want you to become aware of this very moment today. Because exactly what we've been speaking about, Satan has been using this as a weapon to paralyze this generation. So while your eyes closed, if your head is bowed, you know today that it's pretty clear that some of the things that you've been indulging in, some of the things that you've been processing and thinking about and entertaining in your mind, have been the very thing that now have caused you to be far from God. Sin creates a wall. It creates a boulder. That's why even when you pray, it just feels so mm, like, oh well, I prayed. And you can sense that there's no closeness with God because that's what sin does. Sin blocks you. It blocks you. It blocks you from experiencing this beautiful relationship powerful relationship that you're supposed to have with God but if there's still sin unconfessed sin secret sin entertained sin you will not be able to experience the goodness of God in your life that's why everything feels like you're just coming to the vault. You just have to go to cell. Your parents just drop you off because you don't have a choice. But you don't realize that's why the things of God seem so mundane and so overly just done. It's like a routine. Because why? There's no relationship because there is sin that has created a wall. But that wall is broken today by the blood of Jesus. So if that's you today, say, Arch, that's me, Pastor Arch. I want that. I'm hearing the voice of God talking to me. While you're talking to me, I'm hearing the voice of God for me to walk in purity. But first thing first, I need to confess my sin before God. I'm tearing down all the altars that I've entertained of Satan when it comes to everything in my life. And today, I want to come at the altar of God and say, Lord, I surrender everything today. If that is you right now, while every eyes close, every eyes, every eye close, every head is bowed. If you say, Pastor Arch, that is me. I want to be in right standing with God. I want to have a relationship with God. I don't want any walls in my life anymore. If that is you, I'm going to come to three. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And one, two, three. Quickly raise it up if that is you. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. So many hands in this room. No more walls today. Every wall is broken today. Every wall of Satan is broken today. doesn't matter whether it's got to do with, whether it had to do with relationships, whether it's got to do with your personal struggles. But that wall is broken. You may put your hands down today. I'm going to ask again, while if eyes closed, every head is bowed. Maybe you've given your life to Jesus before. Because some of you in this room here, you say, should I raise my hand or raise my hand? But I'm not so bad. I know. No, listen. It's not about what you think, whether you're not so bad. See, if you can rate today, if we had to say your relationship with God from zero to ten, ten being the highest, if you're a nine, your hand should have been up. If you're an eight, your hand should have been up. Maybe you used to serve God and you don't serve God like you used to. You feel a little bit distant from God. You are backslidden because of things that have happened. Maybe you've made some bad decisions and as a result, you're not as close to God as you should be. If that is you too, those who raise their hands the first time, please don't raise your hand again. You can put your hand down. I'm talking about those who need to recommit their lives to Jesus. Those who know should have raised their hands and they never raised their hands. Those of you in the room here today, you heard the voice of God, but you're not sure whether you should raise your hand. And you realize that your relationship with God is not a 10 out of 10. It's a 9 out of 10. Your hand should be up. It's an 8 out of 10. Your hand should be up. If that is you too, 
I'm going to quickly count to three. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And one, two, three. Quickly raise it up. You want to recommit your life to Jesus. You feel like you're an eight out of ten. You're a nine out of ten. And you're not a ten out of ten. You say, I want, I want God. That is you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If your hand is raised, you can put it on. I see those hands. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me. Because we need to end the service. If you raise your hand, I want to encourage you to do one of the most life-changing, eternal decisions. This is forever. You will go to university, get a job, get married, have a family. But this decision goes and spans beyond that amount of years that are ahead of you. Because why? It's a decision that affects what your afterlife looks like. This is some deep stuff. So if you raised your hand, it's so, it's so important. I need to pray with you today. This message speaks to the core of who you and I are. If that is you, if you raised your hand, I'm going to ask you quick, come out of your seat. I want you to run to the front, to the altar of God. I want you to quickly run, 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 run. Just come to the altar of God. God is speaking to you. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. So many of you guys. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. There's still more people coming. Yo, let's go. We can still, there's still more space over here. We can, we can fill up. We can come closer. We can come closer. We can come closer. No, no, there. We can come closer. I'm going to ask everybody, the one here at the front, I want you to take a step closer. Two steps forward. One, two, three. Step two steps forward, as quickly, so we can make space for everybody else. Come on, there's still more people coming, yes? There's still more space over there. You guys can stand over there, there's space. Get everybody to stand there. Some of you guys can stand over there. Thank you, Jesus. Just hold on. Some of you are sitting here, and you say, should I do this, not do this? Should I do this, not do this? God has already spoken to you. There's one thing I decide, when God speaks to me, I don't sit and thinking, uh, I'm not ready, not today. The Bible says the time of salvation is now. So this can be an opportunity to save yourself from the lie. Because some of us, we lie to ourselves and we think we're okay. Some of you standing next to a friend. And they look so pretty, but they're in a mess. There's no such thing as a pretty mess. A mess is a mess. And that person looks so nice today, Shem. But the mess they're in, because you know their story. You love them way too much to let them stand. I want you to just check with your friend next to you and say, listen, you know I know what you and I are going through and this prayer is very important. We won't know which one of you it is, but I want you to just grab that friend and say, listen, let's do this together. It's none of our business which one of you it is, but God knows who you are. If you still want to come, just grab that friend. Don't force them. Don't make it too obvious. Just grab them and say, let's do this together. It's a God moment. And I want you to just bring them and say, listen, it's you and me today. You and me today. You and me today. I'm a good friend. I love you not to let you stand there. I love you way too much to let you stand there. I love you way too much to let you stand there. I want you to just raise your hands in this place. Raise your hands in this place. See yourself. God taking all that rubbish, all that nonsense, God taking away, showing you what your life would have ended up being the destruction. But then he begins to receive you. God is not mad at you. I've got some great news for you. God is not mad at you. God is madly in love with you. But the plan of Satan all along is to try and destroy the great future, Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has for you by bringing in these ideologies of the world and the, the pressures of the world to try and get us to think. But today is a day where we step into holiness with God. So see yourself standing in front of a loving God. He's not judgmental, but He's loving on you. He can see the state that you're in, but He just cannot help but just love you. I want you to just raise your hands real high to God. I want you to pray to Him and say, Heavenly Father, come on, I want you to say this. See Him, see Him saving you. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you that today you woke me up so that I can connect with you. I give you my life. I receive you today. 
as my Lord, as my Savior, and as my Father. Cleanse me of every sin, Lord. I've had time to think and I see the sin in my life. Cleanse it. Remove it. Make me clean so I may look like you. I may have the nature of your son Jesus. Thank you that your word it declares as I have received you as my Lord and as my Savior and as my Father. You declare that I belong to you and that I'm your child and nothing will ever separate me not my past not my friends will ever separate me from your love in Jesus mighty name amen and amen you stand here pure blood washed never to look the same you stand here God has no record of any of the mistakes that you've made now God has no record anymore you see God forgives and he forgets that's the word justification God looks at you at this very moment after you prayed that prayer just as if you had never sinned you have been justified by the precious blood of Jesus you can't change yourself but it takes the blood of Jesus young people you have to be that generation that's going to save that generation absolute commitment to purity absolute commitment to walking with conviction about purity and be outspoken about it everybody else wants to talk about gender why are you not talking about purity everybody tells you what they identify with but you can't even identify yourself in front of other people as a Christian because you're afraid to offend everybody it's time for you to become to become bold listen to me don't let anybody push you over make you think no we gotta accommodate everybody listen we need to accommodate heaven for everybody else there's no time to try and see if you can please somebody I'd rather have you offended and go to heaven than be happy and go to hell are you with me so today be bold when you walk into school don't be a, a little Christian in absence a CIA agent I'm a Christian me and my little Jesus and whatever no Jesus is big Jesus is powerful Jesus is salvation so when you stand there you need to speak why and be bold with your friends at school say so listen I'm a child of God that's what makes me it doesn't mean you're proud it's because you know you are the doorway of eternity for somebody else be outspoken about your belief be outspoken about your relationship with God and so we're gonna break down every altar in our lives as you're gonna sing we're gonna do like the second verse maybe you gonna do the second verse we're gonna do the second verse it's the, these songs is of the song Siakotama which means to bow down there's been so many altars that we have created because of the ideas and the things that we entertained in the world but today we're going to establish the altar of God in our hearts and in our lives and they're going to lead us in worship I want every single person in this in this place here today whether you are in the front here it doesn't matter don't care about nobody because when you you and I stand before God the people that are around us won't be there just say why are you doing that why are you on your knees why are you worshiping with your hands high why are you singing so loud you are too much listen God has done too much for me to keep quiet and so we're gonna worship we're gonna say God I give you my heart amen can we do that you can stand on your knees you can so you can get on your knees you can stand on your feet you can stand with your hands let's worship him to him come on let's say God, you are holy. The word Muele means you're holy. Come on, sing out loud, young people. 
Don't be undignified in the front, at the back. Say, God, I worship you. Those who are us in line, online, I want you to say, God, I give you, God. You are holy. You make me holy. You are holy. You make me holy. You are holy. You make me holy. You are holy. You will make me holy. You are holy. You make me holy. God, it is my cry today. God, make me. Make me holy. Purify my heart, oh God. Lord, renew a steadfast spirit in me, a life that pleases you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, God. We come before you today. Worship you, Jesus. We thank you. Come on, won't you give God a big praise for what he has done in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father God. Right there where you are, every single person in this room, say, God, we make a pledge to you and a promise to you that we will live lives that are holy, acceptable, in your sight thank you that every lie every stronghold of Satan is broken in my life every ideology every type of thinking that I have exalted above your will in my life I tear it down every altar is broken today I stand at your altar presenting my body as a sacrifice before you. Lord, I will live holy. Help me, lead me, guide me to a path and a life of holiness in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a big praise. He's a good God. Come on, give God a big praise. He's a good God. Give God a big praise. He's a good God. Your face. This is the time to pray. 